I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have David Gokstein, congressional candidate and founder of Gokstein Lifestyle Magazine. David, thanks so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Ashton, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive deep with you today on a number of exciting topics. Uh, but if you could start the interview by just giving a little background on yourself, how you got into uh, entrepreneurial ventures, tech, and into politics. Um, background is pretty much uh, in the automotive industry. I've been in the automotive industry for about uh, 10 plus years. Um, at the same time, though, I got interested in blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and um, around 2014 started studying it got interested and got into it and um here ever since <laughs> and now it's uh, essentially uh what i love doing and obviously uh Gokshin media was built on that mm -hmm. that's great and you know i think we have uh, a like-minded uh, idea towards you know how we want to see this industry grow um, and I've been working on media myself since about the same time. Um, could you give the viewers a little insight into, you know, what did you want to see for the industry when you started Gokstein Lifestyle and Crypto Magazine? And, you know, what if, what's the sort of image that the audience portrays the magazine at right now? I mean, the magazine was started to go ahead and provide an outlet which is extremely blunt. So, you know, we're going to call it how it is. We're not, and we might offend some people that we actually know, but we're going to call it as it is. Um, we're going to provide super education on crypto, blockchain. And also, you know what? We're all stuck in the space 24 seven crypto, blockchain. We're, mm -hmm. we're all into cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, uh, you know, you know, what's Ripple doing? Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you have to get away from that mm -hmm. mentally. And that's where the lifestyle part comes in, because mm -hmm. um, for me personally, like I'd want to read in the magazine about uh, clothing or traveling. And um, if you ever pick up and the magazine's free, you can pick it up. You can see exactly what we do, where, you know, it incorporates crypto, but it also shows you the world, mm -hmm. which I like. And we just go out of bounds with it. Totally. And I really like what you guys are doing with that, uh, partially because crypto is bringing the world together through globalization and breaking down barriers, but also being blunt about it in, in the way you're approaching it. Because throughout the last few years, there's been some hype cycles and a lot of people, although it's helped gain interest in the industry, um, you know, there's only so much hype people can have. And if you're hyping up things, usually uh, that leads to shortfalls as well. So to be to be blunt about it and be direct and to, of, of course, be educational because it is a very technical industry uh, and we're still early on. There's a lot of industry knowledge that people need to sort of get before they, you know, put their money where their mouth is. So ha have you guys been focused on um, like super basic educational uh, cryptocurrency uh, intros or also for people that are in the industry as well? We're trying to we're trying to build something where people stop focusing on price mm -hmm. because, you know, do you know what Bitcoin is? Do you know what, you know, Litecoin is like people don't, they're focused on the price. And I understand 95% of the people that jumped in in 2017 is all about the price. Mm -hmm. And obviously the market came down. Some people left, some people called, you know, certain things uh, for lack of a better word, garbage. Um, but at the end of the day, nobody actually educated themselves on cryptocurrency and blockchain. So mm -hmm. that's essentially what Gokshi Media does and Gokshi Magazine, especially we educate, we do basic education, mm -hmm. you know, basic one-on-one to what this cryptocurrency represents and, you know, uh, what is blockchain. So we try to give you the beginner's guide and then we go from there. Um, that's that's really it. And that's our services also. When we go ahead and provide services, um, you know, we focus on basic education mm -hmm. of cryptocurrency and blockchain. So we keep it simple, very simple. That's great. And yeah, and I know what you mean, despite the, the prices going down, it's nothing that hasn't happened before with, the, you know, for example, Amazon 
uh, which dropped 95%, uh, but it had the fundamentals to remain in the internet industry from when it started, and, and now you know it's a trillion dollar company. Um, and something like, not saying that this is what's going to happen, but something like Ethereum has sort of followed in those same footsteps. It's had a solid foundation. Um, it has a lot of fundamental value with smart contracts and removing counterparties and um, you know automating processes and it's also dropped 95 percent in value um, but there's a lot to learn about that technology um, and the advantage it has just as amazon has an advantage of getting things to your door you know the next day so do you do you what do you see for 2020 as we now move into the new year um, in terms of some of the large projects actually delivering uh, products and services into the mainstream that people that aren't familiar with the intricacies of cryptocurrency will actually start to use and take advantage of? I I hope, I, I was expecting a lot of these uh, projects to start delivering now. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've gone through the crypto, you know, crypto winter, as they call it. Um, a lot of, you'll see a lot of the projects uh, that'll stay here for the long term focused on building their projects and making them more, um, uh, making them better, period. Um, 2020, I see a lot of those projects that, you know, had the ICOs, um, I personally see them disappearing. Uh, I feel like 50% of those ICOs and IEOs now will essentially disappear in 2020. And then you'll, you'll finally see the Amazons, like you spoke about earlier, mm -hmm. um, and which would be like Bitcoin, Litecoin. Uh, I really do believe in uh, Ripple and XRP to go ahead and, uh, you know, take it to the next level. Obviously, we know about, you know, all their partnerships, especially with MoneyGram. So like projects that are working and not focusing on their price. Mm -hmm. And I talk to a lot of projects. They're not focused on their price. They're focused on their projects. Yeah. I see in 2020, um, those projects will stay, the prices will increase, uh, and the other ones will just, you know, they will uh, no longer be in this space. We'll be uh, pretty much bag holders of those uh, <laughs> cryptocurrencies that we bought into in 2017. Mm -hmm. Listen, I bought into some of the hype. I tell people that all the time. I bought into, you know, 2017, you didn't know which one to go ahead and pick. It was just, you know, Oh my God! Look at the white paper. The white paper was designed, you know, beautiful. You know, I, it was like Picasso looking at a Picasso painting, and then, you know, uh, six months later, uh, they're talking about they're shutting down, or they were hacked, or you know, their co-founder ran away. You know, so at the end of the day, uh, research is essential. When mm -hmm. people say do your own research, you know, don't listen to, you know. And there's no offense. I have a lot of friends, uh, or I guess a lot of friends on social media that, you know, I probably speak to all the time, more than people in real life uh, about, uh, you know, cryptocurrency and blockchain. But I wouldn't go ahead and sit back and get my information from somebody dressed up in a chicken, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you're investing money. You know, mm -hmm. an avatar that has a chicken or a Gumby display on it, uh, I would avoid that and really, like, look into... Listen, you don't want to read my magazine, that's fine. You don't want to read Gokshin magazine, that's fine. There's, there's plenty of other uh, sources that you can go ahead and turn to. They can turn to you on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know, we can turn to other outlets that provide real education without referral links, okay, uh, sure. to go ahead and educate you on uh, some of the most fantastic uh, projects that I've seen personally uh, in my 30, year, uh, 30 years on this planet. Yeah. That's great. Well, you know, uh, I think that you guys have, are on the right track for the magazine, you know, and it's a free magazine. So uh, obviously there's a little bit of incentive to get some insight into the way that you guys approach the industry. And um, I think you guys have the right approach, but you're not all just about cryptocurrency and it is a lifestyle magazine and, and you've branched even further um, into other emerging trends. And I just want to touch on this briefly about the esports trend. Right, because um, I've noticed it in Canada as well that um, after the the blockchain trend, um, you know, wasn't the number one trend, it started moving into esports as well. And I know this is the same in America. And you guys have dove into that a little bit. Could you touch on how you've got involved in esports so far? So I've always wanted to put my hand into esports. I've been 
talking about this for about three to four years. And, but first you have to learn about it. You know, you can't just dive in. I'm still learning, but, you know, I felt comfortable enough to go ahead and, you know, reach out to Mazer Gaming. And, um, you know, we anchor deal to go ahead and form a partnership. Uh, Mazer Gaming has the number two team in Gears. For those who know about sport, you know, uh, about video games, Gears, uh, they have the number two Gears team in the world. Um, not the United States, the world. Mm-hmm. And it's just a cool... They have more, the esports model has more viewership than the NBA right now. So, to get those eyes, my my thinking was to get those eyes. You know, the eighteen to thirty five year old crowd. They're older, but let, let's just take the eighteen to thirty five year old crowd mm-hmm. and bring them into the crypto space, or mm-hmm. because essentially that's what we're doing here. You know, to bring them into the crypto space. Now you're bringing a new crowd like you know i talk about this about conferences and not to go off record real, but i'm gonna do this real quick you know we go to all these conferences you see the same faces same face same mm-hmm. face same speaker same face same speaker right now you bring in about 65 million viewers into the crypto space who are interested in crypto and now you get to educate them mm-hmm. and also the way it integrates you know a lot of the esports players they play these games. You had, you know, the kid, I'm sorry, I forget your name, but um, he won $3 million for Fortnite. Yeah. $3 million. Okay. That's, that's a lot of money. And yet there's a lot of all these, uh, there's a lot of these tournaments and these kids don't get paid. Yeah. At the end of the day, they don't get paid. So what better than to incorporate blockchain yeah. and smart contracts into esports to make sure that once that event is over, you are paid. For sure. So that's, you know, besides being in love with the entire industry, I'm not really good at video games. Um, you know, you can probably beat me in Call of Duty, but in general, like to be an esports player mm-hmm. and to go into something, win, and make sure that you actually get that money back or get your prize money, that's a hell of a thing. And I think blockchain and blockchain can solve that problem. Mm-hmm. Smart contracts can solve that problem of, you know, tournament runners uh, getting away with taking all the money and not giving or paying out to the teams nor uh, the players or vice versa where the teams don't play the payers. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, well, it, it's really interesting because gamers sort of almost had the first versions of, of cryptocurrency with in-game currencies and then the first cryptocurrency exchange that got huge was the Mt. Gox, which is the Magic the Gathering online exchange, right. which was from a, a video game as well. Um, so there is that affiliation, but esports has just grown so large that, as you said, it's practically the second largest sport in America, you know, ahead of all of these major traditional sports that, and people still have no idea um, how big that it's going to get because it, it's not at its peak yet. Um, so to be able to bridge those two industries um, in, in, in an industry of gamers that are already uh, attracted to technology and can see the benefits, um, I think that would be an easy, easy integration. So uh, that's great it's, that you guys uh, are getting into uh, it. You know, it, it's, it's something that's slept on in reality, because it's a it's a multi billion dollar business. It's not just you know this little you know section here you know yeah. that you know at most you earn a million. No, this is a multi billion dollar business. Mm-hmm. They're building an arena. I'm talking about an arena the size of the, maybe the Staples Center mm-hmm. to go ahead and have tournaments. Okay, like this is a major major player, and like people are sleeping on it. So you know. That's why for me, like, it was a huge thing to go ahead and partner up with Mazer Gaming, uh, especially having the second, you know, second best team in the world to go ahead and, uh, you know, expand and, you know, at the same time, spread the word about, you know, cryptocurrency. It's, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's just another avenue to go ahead and have our voices heard. That's awesome, David. Well, we only have limited time, so I want to jump to the next topic here. I know that you are have brought up your congressional candidacy uh, in New York uh, as a Republican. Can you briefly touch on you know what inspired you to do this and how is it going so far? So uh, what it started off as like you know we're having a meeting, um, you know general meeting with you know Goshen Media members and um, you know Vinny, the co-founder. Uh, 
Quinny Riley, uh, really a uh, really good guy. Um, I sent him back, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna. We have no voices here. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and run. You know, and what started off as a sort of like a joke has turned into people DMing me and you know pushing me and saying, hey, you know, it, it's a good idea. We need somebody to go out there and just like you know voice have our voices heard about you know blockchain. And I'm like, you know what? I'll do it. And people don't even understand. Like they might, you know, a lot of people might think this is a joke, but like I'm, I'm stepping out mm -hmm. of my comfort zone. I'm not a politician at all. So if I do win, I'm going in there as just straight shooting. This is what I believe in, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but at the end of the day, win or lose, as I said to you earlier, I want to make sure that our voices are heard. I think the laws that we have in place right now are not laws that pertain to this space. Mm -hmm. It hurts Americans, um, especially here in the United States, not understanding blockchain, not understanding cryptocurrencies and thinking, mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, the perception of cryptocurrency goes all the way back to Silk Road. So nobody's actually, yeah. you know, thinking about the technologies and the, pr the, the projects that are in place right now that can actually benefit people. Mm -hmm. So I, I really want to go ahead and get in there. And it'll be one of the topics that I'm running on, but uh, I really want people to know about it. And when I lose again, our voices will be heard. I promise mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Especially with the support, all the DMs, I, I really appreciate it. Um, I will make sure that people know about blockchain here and hopefully they can pass you know legislation that actually helps us and doesn't hurt us doesn't have projects from the united states leave to other countries because they can't work here because it's so regulated yeah well i'm sure you'll have the uh the backing of the blockchain and the cryptocurrency industry uh it throughout america and um, i know new york specifically can be a tough uh area for legislation w with regards to blockchain and you know I, I know a lot of companies went through that bit license uh debacle a few years back um but uh besides blockchain are there any other topics that you're passionate about to, to bring to the table uh for your congress stand standing absolutely uh, school systems not having teachers uh sit in a classroom with 50 kids you know we have to do something about that mm -hmm. um you know the way you know the way our police department, law enforcement, the way they're treated right now in New York City is horrific. And we need to do something about it. Um, I speak to a lot of uh, law enforcement uh, um, people and, you know, they're just, you know, they shake their heads. They're like, you know, we can't, we can't do nothing. And it's not like, it, it, listen, there's always a bad apple on every Anywhere you look, there's a bad apple. But at the end of the day, you can't can't hand, uh, handcuff them and mm. not let them do their jobs. So, like yeah. uh, those are particularly two. Um, I like to, you know, the economy's fine. Uh, yeah, let's make it better. Uh, the economy is doing well right now. Um, there's little things that need to be changed. Mm -hmm. That's but, great. And I feel That's like great. you know a younger voice will be able to go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, that young voice is uh, me. And if people are looking to follow your voice or, or learn more about Gokshin, uh, what's the best way for them to follow along? Uh, we are going to get the website up. Uh, and it's going to be Uh Besides that, you can go ahead and follow me on David Gokshin on Twitter, uh, David Gokshin on Instagram, Uh You can go ahead and pick up a free uh, magazine. We have 12 out, so go ahead. Uh, select whatever you'd like. It's all free. It's free. It's being given away. And a lot of work has been put into it. So uh, um, again, if you'd like to send me an email, DM. Um, uh, my DMs are always open. I always try to answer everybody. You can always tweet out to me. I'm always online. It seems like 24-7. Awesome. Well, I'll leave all those links in the description box below for the viewers, David. And thank you so much for your time. Uh, let's follow up in the near future. Ashton, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you very much for giving me... Uh, a channel to speak on, an outlet to speak on.